over three years, how would you describe what role he played in your life? He played the role of um, my volleyball coach, um, a lover, um, somebody who had power over me. Sarah Powers was just 16 years old when her volleyball coach, Rick Butler, began a sexual relationship with her and two other young ladies. He was supposed to be banned for life, yet Butler is coaching girls again. When you think about hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of children nationwide and the 60,000, 70,000 plus volunteers, the AAU wasn't on any kind of background checking those people who were coming in contact with our children. A look at the surprising return by a man banned from coaching volleyball, next on Outside the Lines. And now, sitting in for Bob Lee, John Saunders. Rick Butler is one of the most influential youth volleyball coaches in this country. He has sent dozens of young ladies on to college scholarships. But Butler's career seemingly came to a halt 20 years ago when he was banned by USA Volleyball from coaching for having sexual relationships with three underage players. So why has Butler been allowed to coach again? The Amateur Athletic Union, the nation's largest sports group, is now reviewing its child protection policies over its affiliation with Butler. Shauna Sale reports. I want you to walk out of the gym saying, I left everything on the court. I played as hard as I could. Sarah Powers has been keeping a secret for most of the volleyball world. There you go. She says she was 16 when her coach began a sexual relationship with her. The only people she told were close teammates and later investigators from a U.S. Olympic Ethics Committee. It was a full sexual relationship with him. It was more than a single sexual encounter. Right. Over three years, how would you describe what role he played in your life? He played the role of um, my volleyball coach, um, a lover, um, somebody who had power over me. That coach was Rick Butler, and he's at the center of a firestorm over his role in the AAU, the Amateur Athletic Union. In 1995, the Olympic Ethics Committee banned Butler from coaching its junior girls after finding that he had repeated sexual relations with Powers and two other underaged players. Yet he's gone on to a successful career in the AAU, the nation's largest youth sports organization. You don't ever set into the strength of the law. Butler's prominence in the AAU has outraged child protection advocates who worked on a task force in the wake of a 2011 scandal involving then AAU president Bobby Dodd. We're talking about socially acceptable behavior. Dodd resigned after Outside the Lines reported that he had allegedly sexually abused teenage boys while coaching basketball in the 1980s. We have never been introduced to a tragedy of this nature. Never. I would say, in my opinion, it caught uh, all of us off guard. Henry Forrest, until recently the AAU's president, was part of the group that put the task force in place to recommend changes. We all got together and uh, made a decision to um, form task force and bring in certain people uh, from outside of the AAU to really take a look at what we need to do. And, and that we not police ourselves. They had nothing in place to keep children safe. And I think for a long time it was, you know, we teach kids how to, how to win. And that was the only thing that mattered. And that simply should not be the case. Lauren Book created a Florida-based organization to protect kids from child predators and served on the task force. We put our names on, on a document that we were told was going to change a culture. We didn't give them a get out of jail free card, which is what it appears they've done. When you think about hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of children nationwide and the 60,000, 70,000 plus volunteers, the AAU wasn't 
on any kind of background checking those people who were coming in contact with our children. It was shocking to us. My daughter is my hero. Late last year, Booker and her father, Ron, who also served on that task force, learned about Rick Butler's past. In 1995, Sarah Powers and two other women testified in an Olympic ethics hearing that Butler seduced them while they were high schoolers in his program. I don't think we ever talked about it being wrong, but it was very clear it was because my dad didn't know, my mom didn't know. People didn't know, so clearly it's not a good thing. It was a secret. Butler claimed the relationships were consensual and occurred when the women turned 18, but Powers insisted that he had unprotected sexual intercourse with her while she was a 16-year-old junior volleyball player. The Ethics Committee ruled that Butler showed such immorality, lack of judgment, and unacceptable behavior that the only option was to ban him from coaching junior girls for life. But in June, Butler was coaching courtside in the AAU and route to winning a third straight 18 and under title. Rick Butler is the most prominent person in AAU volleyball. No question. Robert Crispy is the director of a New York area AAU volleyball team. Last year, he had his job as an AAU administrator taken away when he began to question Butler's role in the organization. Years ago, there was as few as 120 teams or so playing the national championship for AAU. Now there's over 2,000 teams. And uh, the JVA is largely responsible, and Rick is responsible for the JVA. Butler's influence comes from an organization he helped create, the Junior Volleyball Association. The JVA, which takes in roughly $2 million a year, struck a deal with AAU President Roger Gowdy in 2010 that swelled the AAU's membership roles and made girls' volleyball its second largest sport after boys basketball. Roger wouldn't be president of the AAU without Rick Butler, and, and the AAU wouldn't have the numbers of members that they have now without Rick Butler, and Rick's not shy about telling people that. Gowdy's critics say that by doing business with Butler, he is willfully ignoring the reforms put in place after the Bobby Dodd case, which some say should make Butler ineligible to coach. He's been banned by the uh, national governing body of the sport and within the halls of USAV, he's at the highest level, he's referred to as a rapist. And uh, that, that's the wrong signal we should be sending. Outside the lines, recorded an interview with Gowdy to discuss the rising criticism of Butler's presence in the AAU, but the group declined to make him available. Hours later, Gowdy announced in an email to members that Butler will step aside as a volunteer while the AAU conducts an independent review of its practices and procedures. There was no mention of the 2012 task force report, and it's unclear whether Butler will still be allowed to coach in AAU events. What do you feel is the tone coming out of the AAU's leadership today? Get lost. I mean, they, they, they have not responded. Um, they have, we have been met with, in my opinion, stonewalling. It's almost like rope-a-dope using a, a, a sports metaphor. I mean, I think they think they can just wear us down, put us on the ropes, and we'll just go away. They found the wrong two people. Great idea. Sarah Powers, meanwhile, says she is still waiting for closure. What would you say to somebody who, you know, 30 years later, everybody deserves a second chance? Honestly, I think that is horrible to say because they didn't live what we lived through. It's, it's defined me, it's changed me. I've learned from it, but it doesn't mean it went away. That's an Olivia! We asked someone from the AAU to speak with Outside the Lines, but they declined. Rick Butler declined our request to join us today, saying he was working at camp, but he did send us the following statement released by his attorney. Mr. Rick Butler is a highly respected and talented professional happily married for 21 years and a father of one, whom has dedicated his life to the sport of volleyball. Mr. Butler has been a member of the AAU volleyball for 35 years, and Mr. Butler denies any wrongdoing or illegal activity, nor has he ever been disciplined by the AAU or charged.